welcome back to another Wednesday Whiskey Talk with the boys of the Buffalo Happy Hour. Today, we have a little ammunition, straight bourbon whiskey finished in Cabernet Sauvignon barrels. Where do we get this from, Mike? Addies, thank you so much for your continued partnership slash sponsorship. They are a local liquor store uh, that is family owned and operated. Very knowledgeable staff, in-house wine sommelier, and an app that you can download at the app, uh, the I, I don't know, the Addie's App Store. How's that? Search for that on the <laughs> Apple App Store and the Google Playground Play Store. And as long as you live in the state of New York, you can buy something spirit-related right off their website. Uh, I'm sorry, their app. And then they can ship it right to your front door, which is exciting. So, Derek, what's the uh, spill the tea on ammunition? Spill the tea, bro. So ammunition is a distillery located in California. And they source from MGP. So they take a mash bill of 60% corn, 25% wheat, 10% rye, and 5% malted barley from MGP. And they take it and they age it in wine barrels. Now, the cool thing about this distillery, though, or this company, which is actually called Daylight Wine and Spirits, which doesn't even make any sense because it's a liquor store to me. Is it a liquor store to you? <laughs> Definitely sounds like a liquor store that opens way before everybody else. But if you think about it, <clears throat> wine and spirits is what they make. We'll get to that. So it makes sense for it to be the name of their distillery or their company. It doesn't make sense for wine. I guess it makes sense for both, but it's confusing to me. Anywho, in 2011, these three guys, Bill, Bobby, and Andy. Probably white. Probably white. Started a winery because they were just sick of paying so much uh, money on these expensive wines, which they're out in California in the S Sonoma Valley. Is that a valley? Is that a region in California, I think? Sonoma? Yeah, Sonoma County in California. So they're like, why are we paying so much money for these wines that suck? How about we make our own wine <laughs> and uh, it'll taste even better? So that's what they did. They were like, we're going to make our own wine. And then a couple years later, they said, you know what also sucks is whiskey. So let's make... No, I'm just kidding. They never said that. But... They did want to have some whiskey because they are whiskey enthusiasts and age it in the barrels that they use for their wine, which is pretty clever. So this one in front of us is a straight bourbon whiskey from MGP, like I said, that mash bill. They also have a rye that they make, too, that they age in a different barrel. But this one is aged in their Cabernet Sauvignon barrel. Sauvignon. And, um, yeah, they, uh, they're they pretty cool. So this is $34.99, and it was aged for three months in their Cab Sauv barrel, and it's 45 proof. Blended for two to four years, uh, whiskey aged, two to four years, and um, yeah. What's right the mash now. bill? Sixty percent corn. Forgot already. Sixty percent corn, twenty-five percent wheat, ten percent rye, and five percent malted barley. So there we go. Label branding. What do you got? Label branding. We got a few things to, to note. American flag on the back. Oh, yeah. Outstanding. Real cork. Nice touch. Uh, they have the the grain of the wood throughout the label. It's a nice colored parchment. Sonoma County, California is front and center. Uh, 45 ABV, 90 proof for all those that care is centered. And they just have a couple other small notes uh, on their labels. Small things like enjoy the taste of freedom. Things like that. So for me, I'm gonna go A plus. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Nose, Derek. So for you guys that are wondering why all this is already written down on the board, <laughs> we forgot to record the audio, and I didn't notice that until right now. So now all you are like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> is this scripted? I thought they don't script stuff. If you do want to know about our scripting, we don't do any scripting because anybody that ever gives us a bottle or we review, it's all in our ethics statement in the video description. I don't care if you're going to send it to us, if you're going to reach out to us on Instagram, if you're going to love on us in the DMs. We ain't giving you a rating just because you've communicated with us. To note, they have not communicated with us. They said basically we don't care who you guys are. Um, we haven't heard from them at all, so this one is kind of irrelevant. But that's why this is already written down. So anyway, initial taste. Nose. Nose. It's almost like I'm getting a little almond flour. 
It took some mad convincing to get him to get that in the last review. And uh, now he's all in. So, yes, a little almond flour, but like we were saying last time, it is very traditionally Kentucky. It's traditional Kentucky, and then you get the note of cherry, probably from the Cabernet Sauvignon yeah. barrels, which were obsessed with Cab Sauv blended whiskeys, uh, where you're getting the, the element of the wine, because historically it mellows it down. Uh, it adds some more fruit notes to it, and you're getting a more full-bodied experience, which will most likely touch on mm -hmm. in the coming sections. However, outside of the wine notes and the almond flour, you do get the traditional Kentucky to Derek's point. So the, you know, the touch of wood, I guess, you know, the, the elements of the barrel. So normally with Kentucky, you get wood sugars. In this case, you're just picking up like a hardened wood element inside the initial, inside the initial taste in the nose. You're also going to be getting uh, the, you know, the fruit skins, the honey, the caramel, the vanilla. Uh, so for this, it, the nose makes you want to just try it and it, it's very enticing. Yeah. So for us, the nose is an A. Initial taste. Boom. So you do get the wine uh, cask that mellows down the whiskey. It's a 90 proof, so there's some bite to it, but it's very mellowed out afterwards. It's nice. You're not necessarily drinking fire, right? So it's not overpowering. Makes you salivate, coat your mouth. It is full body. It's viscous. Uh, for me on the initial taste, I'm still getting the traditional Kentucky notes between the vanilla, the caramel, and the wood sugar. But I do like the fact that you're getting the cherry, the almond um, as well inside the initial taste. My only hope is that the ending note isn't basically phased out yeah. and it's all front heavy. I can't really express in truest words um, how I feel about one dimensional products, but when they just immediately dissipate after the initial taste and there's nothing on the back end, it's so anticlimactic. So we'll get to the ending note in a minute, but I do so far, feel so good. Yeah, I do feel very happy about this product because when you get a product that is finished in a wine barrel, sometimes they overdo it. Yeah. And it's just way too heavy on that red wine because they were like, yeah, this is finished in a wine barrel. Let's really go hard on it. And then it just ruins it. Because you can taste that it's like not a bourbon. If you put this in front of me and you didn't tell me that it was aged in a wine barrel, I probably wouldn't have said this is definitely in a wine barrel. It would have made me think a little bit because to me it's just like a bourbon that has a little cherry note to it or a little plum note to it. This is very well rounded and I think that three months that they have it aged in that cab soft barrel is almost perfect. And that combined with the proof I think gives you that taste that they were at least looking for. Does it lack a little bit? Do I think, like, we'll get to the ending note, but to me, this tastes like a traditional Kentucky bourbon that was finished in a wine barrel. And I, I guess I was kind of hoping when I knew that they were in Sonoma County that there would be a little bit more of a West Coast taste or something a little bit more unique than just a Kentucky bourbon finished in wine. But I mean, we'll get to that on the ending note. So B plus, we gave it an initial taste. I, I do think that that's very fair. Um, it didn't, it didn't give me anything that I would be like, oh, this is an A for sure. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right. So now to the new stuff, ending note. Ending note, I'm getting the baking spice, a little bit of pepper. Um, not, not like a touch of leather, but in ele I don't know, like a very small element of leather, which I'm all about just because that to me makes it a little bit more dimensional and versatile in what you can use this for. Whether it's a pairing with a cigar, whether it's with a cocktail, whether you're drinking it neat um, or on the rocks, I think that this ending note does exist, which is nice because you, even if you were to put it with a slow melt ice cube, if that's your thing, you're still gonna be able to taste something, which is really nice. And you just added the non-homogenous, homogenous stem lock, leaf lock water. What did it do? Basically, it eliminated the initial taste and it front, that doesn't make sense, but it front loaded the ending note or pronounced the ending note, I guess I should say. Okay. Because <clears throat> I think that before I added the water, I was searching hard for that ending note. And when you add the water in, it takes out all those flavor, like those wine characteristics, and it kind of just leaves you with a watery initial taste, but then a 
really heavy MGP bourbon after ending note. Good deal. So B minus. B minus. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. All right. Final rating. Derek, give me that countdown. Three, two, one. 86. 84. 85. That's fair. I mean, I think it's a great product specifically for its price point, which no. we'll touch on in a second. So 85. Yep, 85. Now, this is $34.99 at Addie's. And to that, I say, would you buy it at that price? Is this going, if you didn't have this, like we do, would you buy it at $34.99? And if not... What price point would you buy it at? I would buy it. Absolutely. Something that's this dynamic finished in a wine barrel um, for that price point in New York is almost unheard of. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about I'm all about that. I would definitely buy that and put it in my collection. So if it's not at Addie's, if Addie's runs out and you're forced to go to a different liquor store, what is the most you would pay for this? Forty four ninety nine. I was gonna say forty five. Yeah. yeah. Because it would never be priced at 50. Yeah, no, so, this isn't a 50 product. No, so 45, this is a great option under 50 bucks. Yeah. Honestly, so yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to today's whiskey review of Ammunition, straight bourbon whiskey finished in a Cabernet style barrel. Uh, if you did drink with us today, we always do recommend to drink responsibly, good person. And Michael, do not litter. We're out. Yeah!